What happened? That is the question many Western New Yorkers are asking tonight after a car crashed and exploded on the U.S. side of the Rainbow Bridge. Surveillance video released by authorities shows a car traveling at an incredibly high speed and going airborne before crashing into a checkpoint booth. Here's what we do know this hour. Niagara Falls Police are now officially in charge of that investigation after it was determined that it was not an act of terrorism. The department's crash management unit is now in charge. Two Western New Yorkers in the car died and one border agent was hurt, but is going to be OK. And today the scene was quiet, but we could see a bit more of the damage caused by the speeding car with ripped up earth, dents in the fencing and damage to the concrete barrier. Again, state and federal officials emphasized there was no explosive material in the car. When we asked police about any leads on the case, they had no comment. And the Rainbow Bridge is still closed this hour for that investigation, with the Bridge Commission calling it, quote, a tragic accident. The other three border crossings reopened last night. Good evening, everyone. I'm Claudine Ewing. With police not identifying the couple who died in the crash, we will not be using their names. But many people on Grand Island say they do know them. And they spoke with Channel 2's Ron Plans today about the couple and their well-known ties to this community. This gathering of members of the Niagara Sailing Club on Grand Island following their morning 5K charity walk, tempered by the realization two other members had been lost in that terrible crash on the Rainbow Bridge, the shock setting in for these Grand Island residents as word spread. Not only were people talking, but then I made an announcement and some people were just incredibly shocked. Um, it's just, you know, not only younger couple like that, but so uh, ingrained and influential in this community. I got home yesterday, didn't know anything other than hearing things on the news about the border and saw that their driveway was filled up with all these cars. And I'm like, oh, they're having Christmas or <laughs> Thanksgiving early. And it's like, that's really nice. And then about an hour later, I heard the news and I'm like, oh my God. They were regarded as very good neighbors and kind friends. It's really shock and devastation, and it's just gut-wrenching, really, really. They were so loved. They were so um, generous and kind and always willing to help, you know, just plowing everybody's driveway for the love of it, you know what I mean? Just always willing to help and lend a hand, always, always, always. And there's, they were just... Very kind, wonderful people. Without ever being asked, they would just be giving and gifting, and it's the type of the people that we just lost. Recipients of their generous giving included the Boys and Girls Clubs of Niagara Falls and the North Towns, along with this favorite place, the Niagara Sailing Clubhouse, which was heavily damaged by a March 2021 fire, now rebuilt largely thanks to this couple's contributions through their business and personal donations. Without those folks, we would have never, never been able to, to this extent, rebuild um, this beautiful club. Niagara Falls police say this is a very complicated investigation that's going to take time to try to determine the exact cause of the crash. At this point, police again, we want to emphasize not releasing the identities of the couple. They will also not discuss the type of car they were driving, but various reports indicate a very expensive vehicle. Ron, thank you very much for that report this evening. Governor Kathy Hochul ruled out terrorism, but there are still many questions tonight around the circumstances of the crash. Our team coverage continues tonight with two on your side's Keelan Berrien and what investigators will need to rule out. Keelan. That's right, Claudine. They would now have to look into whether this could have been due to a medical emergency, vehicle malfunction, or if there even was an intent. None of these have been ruled in or ruled out, but that will be a process. As you can barely tell, this was once a vehicle. The car was incinerated and small pieces of debris were scattered across the checkpoints. Governor Hochul pointed out that one key piece of evidence, the vehicle's license plate, is gone. This vehicle basically incinerated. Nothing is left but the engine. The pieces are scattered over 13, 14 booths. So it is a large scene to be able to piece together the real story, to identify the make of the car. Obviously, there is not a license plate. But again, now that terrorism has been ruled out, the Niagara Falls Police Department are handling the investigation. We asked if they had any leads at this time on the cause and they had no comment. Claudine. 
Keelan, thank you very much for that report. Stay with two on your side. As we continue to follow this story, you can find updates here on air and online at WGRC.com.